Hi everyone, this is Julia at home and I'm Julia. Today I'm going to be talking about how I do math in my preschool and kindergarten homeschool. So if you are at all curious about either Montessori or Charlotte Mason math, stay tuned. This is just going to be a quick overview of the scope and sequence that I created for us to use as well as how I teach math in our homeschool. So if you have additional questions or would like to see something in more depth, just let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to share more. Okay, so first things first, there are so many great math curriculums out there, so why would I create my own? Well, I started with Montessori. I love the Montessori math materials. So. Um, I got Montessori math albums and the materials and I started with my daughter when she was in preschool and we did all the number activities um, and those work great and um, I will do a separate video specifically on those when my son gets to them this spring. Um, I loved those, they were working great. We moved on to the decimal system which uses the Golden Bee materials and even did um, addition and subtraction presentations using um, the Golden Beads and they teach that using thousands, hundreds, tens, and units all at the same time. And um, she did get the concept of addition and subtraction and we were going, but I started feeling like we were moving a little fast for both her and me and that we were missing things. Um, so I went in search of additional info. Um, and that is when I came across Simply Charlotte Mason's program, um, Living Math, and I got uh, Mathematics, an Instrument for Living Teaching, and um, the DVD, uh, Charlotte Mason's Living Math, A Guided Journey. And these have been really, really helpful, especially the DVD. I have watched this numerous times, um, or several segments of it numerous times. Um, so they go through um, Rachel Baburina. I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. She's wonderful. And she did a lot of research into what Charlotte Mason would have done. So in the DVD especially, they really show you how to do a Charlotte Mason inspired lesson and what kind of manipulatives and everything she would have used. I really liked this. <laughs> um, it really uh, made sense to me. But on the other hand, I love the beauty of the Montessori materials and presentations. I love how concrete they are. And, and that is something they agreed on. They both used concrete manipulatives, especially for um, arithmetic. Um, so what I decided to do is mesh the two to make my own scope and sequence, at least through, um, you know, the basic arithmetic. When we do get to a higher level at some point, I will switch to using a curriculum most likely, um, but this is gonna get us through, I believe, at least first grade, if not second. Um, so let me show you a bit of what I came up with. Okay, so I literally took the um, lessons from Montessori from my album. I had typed up a list of the order that they go in, and I made a list. Um, there is kind of a, there's a scope and sequence available in this book. So there's a scope and sequence for arithmetic in this book that I used. Um, and I just, I made a list of that and just handwritten of what I wanted to do and like how I would go through it using the DVD as well as a guide. And I literally combined them on paper and then I typed it up and I'm still, this is still fluid. I'm still, um, you'll see in some places that I have notes that I've written, um, but this is to get us through um, basic arithmetic through division. Um, and um, I have a note junior kindergarten here. We're, uh, we're still in the middle of it in kindergarten. My plan is I wrote this and with the idea of we would then move at the child's pace. Um, math especially is one of those things where I think it's really great um, as a homeschooler that I can follow my child and move at their pace. If they're getting a topic really fast, then we can move on. If they need more time in something, we can spend more time or we can come back and circle around. Um, with math, I tend to do a lot of circling around as well. We'll introduce some new stuff, then we'll come back. Um, so I'm going to try to get a copy of this document without all my, I'll, I'll retype it nicely, um, on my blog and I'll link the post below so that you can take a more in-depth look at it. Again, I'm not an expert. This is my first time, you know, my daughter's, in, my oldest is in kindergarten. So um, we haven't been homeschooling for that long. But we've really been enjoying uh, this method. Um, it, it became less of a struggle and I feel like she's, understanding more. 
So that's where we are. So after I had my scope and sequence all typed up, I went ahead and set up a math basket that had math manipulatives, um, some of the ideas that they suggest in the Simply Charlotte Mason program. Um, I put some of my Montessori materials that we we're going to be using soon on the side of that. And I also got a math notebook for my daughter. Um, I purchased it from Simply Charlotte Mason. It's just um, the big grid. I got the biggest ones. So they have different sizes. So what does a math lesson actually look like in our homeschool? Um, so my son's not doing math yet. Um, I'm waiting until he turns four to start the Montessori sequence. Um, but his will be starting with the Montessori uh, math materials. So we'll be doing presentations of those um, probably about once a week and then reinforcing the, um, uh, practicing the current presentation before moving on to new ones. With my daughter, it actually looks a little different every day. Um, so it might be more of a Charlotte Mason math day, um, which at this point where we are is um, we're still exploring numbers, but we're doing um, addition and subtraction mainly using um, tens and teens. Um, we're practicing writing them and exchanging ten bundles and all that. Um, so that's where we are right now. So it might look like just pulling out our math basket and me giving her some um, problems to do, uh, and she can do them with manipulatives. Um, every few days that we do that, we will write down the equations in her math notebook as well, and um, I will write them on chalkboard first with her um, so that we make sure that when she puts it in her math notebook, it's correct and neat, and we review any issues with the writing of the numbers that she may have. Um, so that could be a Charlotte Mason day. Um, it might be a day where I pull out a Montessori material. So recently I did pull out the 100 board and had her fill that up, which she did very quickly. Um, I've also had her do um, the, the short 10 bead chain with the 100 um, chain for Montessori. Um, we're going to be doing the 5 um, chain. Um, and or, or we might pull out coins and practice things with coins. Um, so it could look really different each day, what we're doing. And I, I don't have her record um, very often, once a week um, at the most, but usually we don't even record in the math notebook once a week. It's just all very fun. And then um, one of my favorite things that I've incorporated after watching and reading um, the Simply Charlotte Mason program is mental math. So I try to end each math lesson with some mental math problems. And I also try to work them in to our days um, because we don't do math lessons every day, but um, I try to work a few in whenever it seems like an opportune time. Um, so recently we were at Lowe's getting some lumber and we're in, you know, the lumber aisle there. And it's, you know, in the middle of a weekday and there's just like middle-aged men picking out their lumber and there's me with two kids and I'm asking my kindergartner, you know, I need two shelves that are three pieces long, so what size lumber do I need? Um, or, you know, if this is 12 pieces, how many, if this is 12 feet long, how many, um, you know, four piece, uh, four foot pieces can I get? Um, and I do end up, there ends up being some multiplication division, but it doesn't end up being super hard. It's stuff that she can figure out with her hands. Um, and at other times, like when, when, right after our lessons, whatever, I try to I try to connect it to things that she's interested in. So she's really interested in animals, um, wants to be a vet when she's older. So um, a really simple one would be something like, you know, um, if there were five sheep in a in a pen and two got out, how many are left in the pen? Or um, with, with horses, one that's a little bit more complicated is, you know, you have two mares and they each have two foals. How many foals are there? Things like that. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. And I think she has fun with it too, because she likes to randomly come up with questions for me. In church this morning, she said, there are five fans and one of them is working. How many are not working? <laughs> and, and had me do the math. So um, that's been a really great addition to our math as well. We also do read some math books. Um, we've been reading through Life of Fred a Apples, which is the first one. Um, and I have some other books um, that are just fun. Uh, and we do play math games as well. And those are both things that I have in my head that I should do more of because it's a really fun way to learn math. But I think those are both, some of our favorites might be a subject of another video. So as I mentioned earlier, um, this is 
mainly I'm planning on using through basic arithmetic. As she gets older and does more advanced math, then I will probably get a pre-prepared curriculum of some sort and I'll look into that more then. Um, but for right now, this is really working for us and I really enjoy getting to use my Montessori materials as well as um, using the Charlotte Mason concepts in a way that just makes sense. So if you liked this, or if it was helpful for you, please give a thumbs up. Again, if you have any questions or you wanna see things more in depth, leave a comment below. I am hoping to show a little bit more, maybe of our math basket, um, some books and games that I enjoy. And please subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Talk to you later.